Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Got a very special broadcast for you today. And this is coming from an amazing revelation that I received here uh, sometime last week. I, I really wanted to bring it out earlier, but uh, with all the time constraints, haven't been able to do it as of yet there. Uh, but uh, we were down, of course, just recently down in Navarre, Florida for a conference uh, of, of called a Believe Conference with uh, a bunch of friends there in the LifeWave uh, group that we uh, are in. And I'll, in fact, I'm going to share with you some new testimonies that we have here at the end of this broadcast. But while there, I took uh, this picture here and it just so profoundly goes with the message that I'm wanting to share with you guys today about all things are possible to them that believe or to him that believes. And uh, oddly enough, uh, Danny, uh, uh, a minister that was there, uh, really just ended up preaching a message on faith. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, boy, you're stealing all of my content. No, I'm just kidding. He, he, just, he took it from a different angle and he did an amazing job on faith there. I'd love to be able to get Danny on. Maybe we can get him on sometime to share uh, some of those thoughts that he has as well. But I want to take you very deep into what faith really is and what you are capable of when you really believe. So let's, without any further ado, let's get started right into this. Um, and I'm just trying to think where is the best place. I'll, I'm going to go with the, the scripture that I got the, the revelation on first uh, over in the book of Mark, and then we're going to expound in all different directions on this. Uh, and oddly enough, it's going to take us in some very provocative uh, areas for sure. The, the core one was verse 23 of Mark chapter 9. Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now I'm using modern English instead of KJV English so that we, if we do a translation of this, it's easier for the um, for the for the uh, the system to pick up the the words and translate them for us. So again, I'm going to say again to you here. Quote this scripture. Jesus said unto him, "If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes." Well, let's set the stage about this because in reality, what you're looking at, you're, you you've got a man, a Jewish man, that comes to Jesus. He's got a child that is that's having a very, very difficult time. Uh, he doesn't necessarily know the message at that time of Jesus, but you know he's no doubt heard about the great things, laying uh, you know him healing the sick, etc. So he comes to him, uh, and this is what this is how we get the stage set. And it says here, we'll just kind of read a little bit of that. He answered him and said. Uh, o faithless generation, how long, Jesus says, shall I be with you and how long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Because if you remember, uh, th this, this man comes to Jesus because his disciples were unable to cast uh, the spirit out of his son. And he talks about he gnashes with his teeth. He pineth away he, uh, and, and he tears him. He foams at the mouth. Oftentimes we read in another place, he throws himself into the fire and uh, he, he said, I brought him, uh, spake to thy disciples, they, they should cast him out, and they could not. And so he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? He said, Of a child. And oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can't do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Right? And Jesus says to him, if you can't believe. In other words, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, oddly enough, there, people a lot of times focus on the part about if you can believe. But in this case here, he's specifically talking to that man. Now, we could address this to everyone as well, though, because there are a lot of people like that. Their faith is just not there. 
But there's something, though, that people may not realize. If you have the Spirit of God within you, just like Jesus continues on, he goes, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And when Jesus saw that people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. A deaf and dumb spirit is what was in him. And I've heard all kinds of reasonings of what was wrong with this child by ministers over the years, and yet Jesus tells you what it was. It was a deaf and dumb, a deaf and dumb spirit. And the spirit cried and ran him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? All right. Now he tells them, it, he said unto them, this kind cometh forth nothing but by prayer and fasting. But there is a very key element in here. There's something that was still missing in the disciples at that time. And the reason being is because Jesus Christ had not died. His spirit had not come back and his spirit had not come upon them. I want to show that, though, to you here in John's Gospel, chapter 14. And we're going to kind of build from this. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwells with you, that was Jesus Christ, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. That's amazing. In that day, there's going to be a specific day that they're going to know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And if you remember after the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down and came upon them, they became bold. They, they then had, Peter was no longer the coward, not willing to say that he believed that Jesus Christ was truly the Son of God when he's standing there trying to sneak in there and find out what was going to happen to Jesus. He became emboldened then, once the Holy Spirit had fell upon him. They all became emboldened at that point. Why? Just like the picture I showed you here a moment ago of the ocean. If you were to take and go out there with a jar and many people have done this, and just get a scoop of that water up, put a lid on it, and you took it back home with you because you wanted to remember you were at whatever beach you might have been, Destin Beach, whatever the case may be, you were there, and you've been to the ocean, and you wanted to be able to say, I got part of that ocean with me. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, everything that's in that ocean, every molecule, every, every, every mineral, the salt content, whatever it may be, when you scooped it up in that jar, what you have in that jar embodies that entire body of water. So though even we might say that our Heavenly Father is infinite, He is everything, He is healing, He is creation, He is you know, even Jesus, when he was here on the earth, we have records. He walked on the water. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. Uh, you know, all manner of things that he did. Even like Philip, where we saw Philip, you know, he was able to basically, what we would call, uh, he would travel from one place to the other, took his own body with him after he preached to the Ethiopian eunuch. He goes uh, a, a good day's journey by foot within a matter of seconds and ends up in another place. Did he do anything that Jesus had not already done? No. Jesus did the same thing when he was there in the temple and they wanted to stone and kill him. It says, it, it doesn't say it disappear, but he basically, they couldn't find him no more because, boom, he's out of the temple and gone. And no one ever saw where he went. He was able to move to another dimension and walk right out from among them and nobody knew about it. 
traveling by thought, so to speak, right? Just giving you an idea. So knowing who you really are. So everything that's in that ocean, if you got a jar of that water, you got everything. And Jesus makes this, makes this beautiful statement that that day you shall know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. So everything that God is, Christ is. Everything that Christ is and everything that the Father is, you are. If you have that spirit. That's where the key is in that verse right there. If you can believe, or in this case here, if God is within you, then you are limitless. Let me just show you. I'm going to prove something to you. Here's a scripture here. This is in Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to look at this one verse right here. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Now what was this about? This is, uh, this is about the rich, uh, rich young ruler comes to Jesus. He wanted to know what did he need to do in order to have eternal life. Um, you know, let me back up to where it's at. Behold, one came and said to him, Good master, verse 16, What good thing shall I do that I, might, I may have eternal life? He said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Just watch that. That's an interesting right there. If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which Jesus said, uh, he saith unto him, which Jesus, say, uh, Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. So he quotes a few of the ten. And by the way, it's very obvious it's only from the ten. One, two, three, four, Commandments, he only quotes out of the ten. Well, another one, here we go. Honor thy father, five, and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, six. The young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Wow. He actually lacked something? Yeah, he still lacks something. Jesus said unto him, If you will be perfect, go and sell that what, uh, what you have and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. He's actually offering him to be a disciple. It wasn't that he's saying to, 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 to everyone else on the planet, go sell everything you have and follow Jesus Christ, and you shall have treasure in heaven. But he's talking about him specifically. He's being offered to be a disciple. And of course, you could do the same. You could sell everything you have and then and give it to the poor and then you could go out and, and become a missionary on the on the field and, and do the same like that. You'd, it would make you like a disciple of Jesus Christ as well. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. He didn't say it was impossible, he just said hardly. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now, in that case there, with, that is a, that when you're saying with God, that is when you and God have become one. All things are possible. Now, the Hebrew Matthew words it a little differently. They didn't translate it right in English, or I shouldn't say they didn't translate it right. They left a word out. But I want to show it to you over here. And then I want to show it to you in the Hebrew side of it because it's very, very fascinating. I'll make sure it's nice and big for you. Verse 26, he turned to them and said, with man, the matter is difficult. Difficult for you as a man to do that. But with God, 
Now he, they translate, everything is easy. But they left a very key word out in translation. For the life of me, I have no idea why they left that word out. And that was the word right there. Lahayot. The word easy is kal. I'm doing it backwards from the way Hebrew, Hebrew is written right to left, right? Devel kal lahayot. So what is he saying there? Venagid ha elokim ha kol devar. So he's saying there with God ha kol ha kol. The, the word kol is for is everything, but when he's got the letter hey in front of that, it is specifically he is he's not just so, so but with God everything. He said, Hakol. Hakol means that there ain't nothing. There's not anything that is not included in what he's about to say. Hakol. Not just kol. Hakol. But with God. In other words, if God is connected to you, Ha Elohim. And not in this one here, he didn't, he didn't do that as a just to you as an individual, but he did that as a collective body of believers. So he says, hakol, hakol, like I said, it's literally, there's not anything that would not be included, both visible and invisible, or visible and not visible, I should say, right? Hakol devar. Okay, so absolutely, and devar is thing. It can also be translated as diber, which is a word, then he says, Kal, easy, but that Lahayot is the critical word. I've not told you the translation yet, too, unless you know Hebrew. It comes from the word Hayot. Hayot is to be. La Hayot is to make it to be. So if you have God in you, See, he says over here, Hadam, Ha'adam, Bene Ha'adam, for the sons of men, Hadaber, or Hadavar, with men, these things, koshe, are hard. If, if you're just trying to do it from your own intellect and, 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 and carnal knowledge and everything, and you're going to become a Christian and you're going to serve God this way, you got it fixed in your mind, this is what you're going to do, you know. So, so for the sons of Adam, because it is for that, it means that. The Yomed Nagid Benech Adam Hadavar Kashe. For the sons of Adam, that's very hard. The Nagid Halohim Hakol. But when you're taking it now with God and you're putting God in there, then there's not this literally the the, the Hakol Devad. Every Thing that there could possibly be in your mind, imagination, both physically and not physically, it is easy. Lahayot. It is easy to be. Literally, you could even say to create or to make manifest. It, it, to, to be, as the hayot is to, for that to come into being. So therefore, what is it you're seeing in the scripture here? If God is with you, as John says over here, and that day you will know that I am in my Father, you are in me and I am in you. See, see, once you have that whole ocean now is within you because God is within you, then we can come back over here to Mark and we can see, he said unto this kind, oh, wait a minute, back up here. Uh, do, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, don't want to lose my spot on this. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The point that I'm wanting you to really see in this here, as a believer with the Spirit of God within you, there's not anything that will not manifest for you. And it's actually not even hard. It's easy. I want to show you, though, what trips a lot of people up, though. 
there is something that actually trips the people and it's the reason why they could have the spirit of God but that you got to remember that Satan is like a, 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 a lion lurking about seeking whom he may devour right he wants to suck you dry and so that you have no clue as to what's within you this scripture here in Hebrews chapter 6, I'm just going to use this as a foundation setting. It's kind of, I don't mean it as a pun here because of it saying there, but it's something that I have totally had a, a completely different idea in my mind what this actually meant and just recently got the revelation of what it's actually saying. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. All this we will do if God permit. Now, he's not talking about that the foundation of repentance from dead works. He's not talking about, uh, you know, when you first believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the dead works he's talking about is the law itself. And the baptisms, he's not talking even about, I don't believe he's talking about water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. He is talking about the mikvah. You see, the dead works is when you would take all the time, every time you sin, you got to take your little lamb. The lamb's got to be killed. You got to go, go to a mikvah. You have to be washed yourself before even you can present the sacrifice. It's traditional things that always brings about a remembrance of sin and because of that you never get nowhere now then he goes on for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the holy ghost and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the son of god afresh and put him to an open shame Now, by the way, crucifying the Son of God afresh, in other words, they keep, they have to keep killing their lamb and taking him back again. And it's even, maybe this is a possibility that when he's talking to this scripture here, I'm beginning to wonder sometimes if he's not even talking about the fallen angels. They knew better. And they did what they did. But in, in all fairness, let's just say it's somebody that had believed. They tasted of the Holy Spirit. They got a taste. Uh, and, and that may be that it was before Christ's resurrection. So the tasting of the Holy Spirit was they did not have they did not have the Holy Spirit, but they were able to cast out devils and things like that. But then, like in the case of the 70, if you remember, they were able to cast out demons and devils and everything else. Jesus sent them out. They come back and many of them said after he said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And they said, we'll walk with this man no more. That was a hard saying. We'll walk with him no more. They tasted they were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. They tasted the word of God and the powers of the world to come. By the way, that power is now within you. If you have the Holy Spirit, now that power is within you. So don't fall away to renew again unto repentance, and, you know. And, and where would that be? Well, if you go to Hebrews 10... you kind of get a better idea of that. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. Because why? You get a remembrance of sin constantly. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. In other words, if they really, if, if the sacrifices really worked like they should work, which they didn't because they're animal sacrifices, you could offer this animal and once you're purged, you're done, you no more have the conscience of sin, you're, you're, you're free to go forward. Because that the worshiper once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. I find a lot of Christians living in that same thing. They make mistakes, they do something wrong, and they totally forget that Jesus Christ paid that way for them. 
and they keep bringing the lamb back and offering him again and again and again. Satan loves to beat people down and drive them in the mud. You know why? Because he doesn't want you to know that what's in you is the spirit of the living God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby and you are sealed unto the day of your redemption. If you have the Holy Spirit living within you, don't let the enemy constantly condemn you. You make a mistake, Father, I'm sorry. Pick it up, go again. Don't remember the sin. Don't keep dwelling on the mistake that was made. The flesh does not inherit eternal life. It's your soul that inherited eternal life. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. It's impossible. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. But in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and, and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hast thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. So he's saying the law said to do it, but at the same time, God is saying he didn't have any pleasure in it, even though there's a law for it. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first that he may establish the second. Now you know why there's a new covenant. Let's look at where that comes from, though. Psalm chapter 40, verse 7. And I'm going to show you something here because there's a couple of things, again, just like it is in the Hebrew Matthew, that they don't translate, translate properly. Sacrifice and meal offering thou hast, hast no delight in. So it didn't matter if you're like Cain and Abel, right? Cain and Abel. One offers the lamb, one offers up the fruits of the field. Now, we know that the scripture says the lamb was acceptable. The, the, the fruit of the field uh, was not acceptable. Uh, okay, that's the way, that, that's what we have written to give us an idea of these things here. But it wasn't that there wouldn't be a meal offering in the future. Sure, there was. But and the same thing with the sacrifice of an animal. Sure, there was. But even in those, he did not delight in either one of them. Mine ears hast thou opened. Notice what David said. Mine ears hast thou opened. Remember what Jesus said? If you have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Wow. And in the book of Hebrews, the writer is saying, yet the law says it. Then said I, lo, I come with the roll of book. He nay, behold, by thee I come, Bemigilat Sefer. Literally saying, I come in the roll of the book. So he's literally, David is saying, he's saying there is a prophecy in the book, and he's coming in that, and it says, which they put on here, which is prescribed for me. I forget how King James translates that, but it's still not correct. Kotav Ali. It is written about me is what it actually says. It is written about me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is in my inmost parts. That's more correctly in the, I think in the King James Version, they said in my heart, and it doesn't actually say that either. Uh, the Torah to Techa, which is, and the law, uh, is betoch me, uh, me'ah. And that is in the very middle of his, 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 his inner being here. It includes everything. It's, 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 you can't even, because of the word uh, me'ah that you have there, you can't even, cons it's not one particular organ of the body in this case here. It's just like, in other words, it's dwelling within him, within the midst of him. It dwells there. I have preached righteousness unto the great congregation. Lord, I did not refrain my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness 
thy salvation. And there you go. Betoch la vie. That is correct. You know, within the midst of my heart. But over here, betoch mea. It's totally different. It's no one specific bodily organ. So it has nothing to do with really the flesh. It's just within him, within his own spirit, within who he really is. That he had that hidden in there. I have not concealed thy mercy, thy truth from the great congregation. So the thing is, is God has come and, and as he says in here, he's basically reestablishing what the second is, what the true law is, and that is so that the Spirit of God can once again dwell within human beings. This is why David is saying that. This is, this is what hinders so many people. So many people are caught up on the law and they're going right back. See, as the scripture says, the dog returns to his vomit, so do you. And when I say that, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you have to understand that Jesus Christ, his life living in you is the ultimate. It is what will cause you. Is, do you realize that's what's going to cause you to be able to leave this realm? It's what's going to cause you. You already are, are with him in heavenly places right now with Christ Jesus. And there's no limit to what you can do. Because everything that he is, is within you. When he's within you, you can ask what you will. That's what he says. Ask what you will. Let's, let's pull that one up there. Right? Let me find that out. John 15, 7 is right where it's at. Let's go to John 15, 7 then. Next, next one over. Next chapter. 15. Abide in me and I in you and the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is not as withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Another place it says, you know, whatsoever you ask, believe that you have received it, and you shall receive it. You live below your privilege because you don't know who you are. Whatever you have need of, speak and go forward. Even another thing that's got people all caught up, and I just did this message on this just recently, right here, about think to change times in the law. It is not who you thought, is what it should say. It's not who you thought. Over in Daniel's vision, right? He shall think to change the season and the law. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and a half a time. And in this message, I go in there and I break all that down. And how many years, even I used to think, too, I never could really figure out what the law was he's going to do or whatever, you know. But then you get people say, oh, it's the Catholic Church because they took, they changed the law, the Torah, the law that God gave Moses. And they decided to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. That was changing the law. He thinks he can change the law, do what he wants. I even did a message one time because the Pope was trying to come up with a new set of Ten Commandments, basically just altering the Ten a little bit, and it made it look like that. Sure it did. But then you go to find out that the word that is used in there, just like you can see here on the screen right here, Vedat, is not Torah, it's not that kind of law, and it's only used in three different places in the Bible, Esther, Ezra, and Daniel. With Esther, it's talking about a decree that the king made. Obvious. When you get to Ezra and you get to Daniel, it's talking about the decree that Cyrus, Artaxerxes, and Darius all made concerning that Israel would go back and build the third temple and reestablish Jerusalem again. It's the only decree it talks about. 
You don't have it nowhere else. And so when this beast rises up, this so diverse, so evil, so ungodly beast kingdom that rises up, and we already know Daniel said it would be in the latter day. The angel tells him, seal it up as for a day uh, up into the future and everything. And it's interesting, right? It's, it's so, to me, it's fascinating. I mean, let, let me just pull this up real fast because, uh, and, and I'm not going to go into it. We're fixing to close here in just a second here, but uh, I'll just take you real fast and just show you something because Daniel is, like I said, he's talking about a decree. That's what that beast does. Let's, let's, or let's, let's see. Then I desire to know the truth concerning the fourth beast, which was diverse from all them exceedingly terrible. His teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured bre break in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet. You ever look at over, I think it's in the book of Job, when he talks about Leviathan. Do you know he actually describes his scales like nails of brass? I think if I'm not mistaken is one place where that's at, you know. And we know that in the fourth rider, the rider of Revelation of the, of the pale horse, is death, comes from hell, brings hell with him, etc., right? Just kind of interesting. And it's a beast that we're talking about too here. And how they, Jesus said, you of your father the devil, called them serpents and vipers, reptilians. All that's kind of interesting, right? I just find that fascinating to know that, right? But anyway, so he goes on. And he said, Thus said the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces, right? But you get down here. And he shall speak words against the Most High and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High or the holy ones, that is, which are the believers of today. And he shall think to change the time. The Hashanah, the Menin, which is, you know, the time or the season. You could use it either way. And the Vedat, the decree. The only decree that it is talking about, because we know this already, because it's only in Ezra, really, and in the book of Daniel, was a decree that they put forth to go rebuild the temple and to set Jerusalem back up again about 2,500 years ago. And it was fulfilled back then. They did go build the temple. And it was at that time, then the Messiah comes, Jesus comes. And here the Jews of today are those that are claiming to be the Jews that are running the government right now. They are claiming that the Messiah has not come and that he's going to come. And so therefore they're trying to apply the decree of Daniel to today's time frame. And so, so many people are all for the building of the third temple. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. And they're going to do what? Go right back to dead works. And if you go along with it, you crucify the Son of God and put him to an open shame because you have rejected Christ as your own sacrifice. It will be impossible for those that once tasted of the heavenly gift to renew themselves to repentance. This is why he said, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. Babylon, book of Revelation. And just think about it. If you come out, filled with the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that's impossible for you in the first place. So what do you have to lose? Nothing. Listen, thank you for taking the time to listen today. Uh, I do want to share with you those. Uh, we have some beautiful new testimonies I figured I'd share with you real quick. This is on our YouTube channel called Benoon X39. Okay, Benoon X39. And uh, in this one here, uh, we have a few testimonies I figured I'd share with you because the product really is absolutely amazing. And... Uh, you, you don't have to distribute if you don't want. If you want to, that's perfectly fine. You could also earn some income from that. That's not what we're talking about. But what we see is it's helping so many people. Uh, so let me just play that for you, and then I'll leave a link in the description below for you if you decide you would like to try it or order it. 
Uh, in fact, I'll even pull that up there. It's just uh, our LifeWave page, lifewave.com forward slash Benoom. Uh, and not only are you helping yourself, which is really the important thing is you help yourself with so many things and we've heard everything. The, the patch doesn't heal you. Uh, first I gotta tell you that, it doesn't heal you, but it really gives your body the tools it needs so that your body can do what it's amazingly meant to do and that's to you know, rejuvenate itself, right? So this is what's so amazing about this product that's why I just so strongly encourage people, you just click on shop, go right there on our website, lifewave.com forward slash Benun, and that's right there, B-E-N-N-U-N.com. And, uh, but anyway, let me just share these testimonies and then we'll close. Listen in. Right. <laughs> I want to share my testimony. So um, just recently from last week. So I... Uh, been on the patch for almost two months and um, had some reaction with my hormones. <laughs> I felt that actually after the first week. So I was so surprised to have such a fast reaction to it. So I got a call from my naturopathic doctor um, since I had a second blood draw, which was great um, to see it at the beginning and then in the middle timeline on it because I tested the blood right before I started and so got a call from her and she said guess what you can get off your medication your hormones because you already reached you reached your optimum so um, that was great news for me so I didn't do anything different than the patch so it Amen. did some repairing already um, well, so, <laughs> but yeah. I take it if the body is balancing itself out and you have unwanted symptoms, your body will do the right thing. So um, also with placing it on the thyroid is because of a testimony I heard for, in your group. And it makes a great conversation open because it's so visible. Yeah. Um, sometimes Doctor, Let's he listen to Ron. He had an update on his. The patches he'd been looking into. It, so I brought him some samples. But he couldn't believe, he said, you can't argue with a blood test like that because the stage four kidney disease went to two. And I mean, all kinds of things have happened. I was starting to get glaucoma like my mother got. She had to have surgery. And uh, he checked it and it was completely normal again. So he said, there's no point in prescribing anything. So. That is amazing. So. And by the way, Ron uh, also was the one that had congestive heart failure. Blood tests now are saying he has no congestive heart failure. Uh, he's now at stage one kidney failure. So I, I would have to say he's no longer in kidney failure. At a recent, uh, uh, he spoke about his GFR being at a 60 now. So various kidneys are doing amazingly well. And the doctor knew that nothing else could have changed us. He had to know what had he done. And it was only the patches. His doctor now is using the patches as well. So amazing to hear that with him. Uh, and let me take you to one more here. This is Sister Donna. Really getting worse and worse. But the I was on X39 for, I, I guess, three months. And then I started X49 also. But my knees have improved greatly. Long way to go yet, but greatly improved. Yes. That's, and that's great. That's great. That's my main thing. Bladder league, things like that has also gone away. A hip that was starting to hurt, it went away, like, in just a real short amount of time. Um, and then my son, who is on dialysis, kidney dialysis, he was one that uh, was only using half a patch. So for three months, he used a half a patch. And he, I think he was had more energy, but he didn't really know if he did that much or not. Um, and then he says, I'm just, I just want to use the full patch. I said, go for it. So he's been doing that. He can't drink enough water. That's the big problem but he's managing okay. And the great thing from that so far is that 
his hemoglobin is stabilized. Wow. Because last year, he was in the hospital seven times because hemoglobin would just drop. And um, he never could. It, and they didn't know why it was. They thought he had something leaking somewhere. And they did all kinds of tests and everything else, and they couldn't find anything. But it would just all of a sudden just start dropping again. So they started giving him shots once a week, make sure that didn't happen. And now he hasn't had a shot for a month. Wow. So, wow. so I think that's a big, big, big thing. How, what's his GR, GFR uh, level on? Okay, there. I don't think she knew what the GFR part was. Let me just see. An amazing thing, you know, so. And something she had had, like, for around five years. Oh, there, here we go. Yeah, that's her daughter, a, I think. Um, consultant. Better and maybe not have to be on dialysis. And yeah. And that would be an amazing thing, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, and Absolutely. two, the other thing is one area, and then it moves. Um, oh, I call her consultant because she's a distributor. <laughs> My distributor. Um, Patty Ortiz who had a, I don't know, I don't know what the name of it is. She had a lung disease that was only getting worse. And they said it would never get better. And something she had had like for around five years, I think. And it has improved greatly. The doctor has been very shocked. Wow. So I want to get her on with you. She's usually busy on Sunday nights, but. Uh, we'll do it on a different night. We can okay. So another testimony of uh, someone that Donna had brought in as well, shared the patches with uh, that she was talking about there with the lung issue and stuff. So, and so in, and just in closing, just as a reminder for those of you that are wanting to order the products here, be sure to go to lifewave.com. This is in the description below forward slash Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N. And you can either go and shop and purchase what you prefer. Uh, X39 is that foundational patch uh, that's just very, very important. However, they do have what they call the X39, X49 bundle. There is a lot of people that like that, especially knowing that uh, even with EMF, there have been case studies that have showed some very good improvement for people that suffer from uh, 5G type radiations, things like that. Uh, and that's using the combination of X39 and X49 together. And if you want to come and if you've got more questions, you can email us at benoonx 39 at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description below for you as well. You could, uh, you know, if you have any questions you want to ask, especially for those of you that would really are considering to want to do this as a business because you have friends that you'd like to share it with as well, certainly drop us a note and uh, we will do everything we can to, to help you with that. Uh, do keep in mind when it's ministry related questions, go to Israeli News Live at gmail.com because uh, I don't monitor the, that particular email there. It's done uh, normally by my wife. She does not get into answering biblical questions over there. So if you have those types of issues, please go to Israeli News Live at gmail.com. God bless you and thank you for listening.